and hello again and here we are looking at two output shafts for my GPZ 750 engine the first one here is damaged because the splines are worn out and this one here is from a later 750 I think ZR7 so I've tried to use these output shafts in the engine but it turns out I couldn't because some of the bearings it spins on have a different size so here at this end this is the original bearing as you can see a little needle roller bearing there and this one is similar but it's not the same so this bearing is a little bit bigger and therefore it won't fit in the engine cases so what to do what to do well turns out that the shafts are the same diameter so in theory all I had to do was to remove these two bearings and swap them over and I should be good to go and that's how we ended the last video but since then I've found out there's more problems because this bearing here and this one here is held in place by what I thought was a circlip right on the end of the shaft but it turns out this is not a standard circlip it doesn't have any eyelets in it so I can't use circuit pliers to remove the circlip and I'm concerned that if I now come along with say uh, I don't know a small screwdriver and try and lever this off I could damage it and I don't think you can buy replacement circlips for these shafts anymore so if I do and I damage it I've got a real problem next problem is or potential problem is that although these needle roller bearings spin quite happily I'm not sure if they'll come off quite so happily I think they will but this one is a little bit tight so the alternative is to spin it round and remove all the cogs all the bearings from this shaft and then remove the bearing I want to change from one end all the way out to this end of the shaft again more potential problems because these bearings are on pretty damn tight and as are some of these uh, cogs and I don't want to risk damaging them as I remove them and to remove them I may well have to use a hydraulic press so what to do what to do well first let's move these out of the way and instead we've got a box that's just arrived from good old eBay because it turns out parts for these old engines from a Z650 or 750 are dirt cheap very cheap indeed so I found a replacement transmission just the input and output shafts from eBay for a Z750 not a 650 to 750 and it cost me precisely 30 pounds so I've not opened it yet as you can see it's all wrapped up so let's see what this thing's like once I've opened it up oh yeah that looks very nice we can't see from that we go close up but these splines look absolutely brand new can't see any problems at all very clean got the bearings here oh yeah that's very nice again very clean so fingers crossed fingers crossed this will go straight on when I've inspected them I will look at them quite carefully and maybe clean them but quite frankly these look really clean to start with so that looks pretty damn good that's fine in fact telltales are things like the wear on this bush here looks pretty good actually a little bit dirty but it's not worn like my old one was which is also a good sign yeah pretty happy with that so I'll just say I'll, I'll just uh, check it over a bit more carefully perhaps give it a good clean in my looks like bath and then uh, yeah we can get it in the engine and so thankfully these new gears seem to fit just fine and now for some good news these filler engine mounts have now been completed along with this rear caliper mount so before they go off to be hard anodized I've got to do a bit of work and what I've got to do is lynch them and remove all the small scratches all the marks that have been inscribed on them before they can go off to be hard anodized as I say and so I'll be using 120 wet and dry use dry on this piece here I think you can tell you know there are marks on it that we don't want to see scratches on both sides so I just want to get it looking a lot better before these pieces go off to be uh, hard anodized to do that I'll just go this way the whole time and we'll slowly make it look a lot better it's very slow very tedious so uh, come back when I finished 
And so there's the first side done. And luckily, I don't have to do the back side because you can't see that when it's on the bike. Now I could keep going and give this a really bright, shiny, almost chrome-like finish. But if I did that, when it goes off to be anodized, it would look quite glossy and shiny once it's uh, on the bike, which I didn't want. I want this to be a kind of semi-matte finish. And so this should be good enough. So now I've got to do the rest, which might take me hours and hours and hours, but we'll get there in the end. And so with these pieces now prepared, all I've got to do is take them over to my local specialist, Camcoat, and get them hard anodized. But not so quick because Camcoat have a minimum order value and that's 50 pounds. And these parts won't cost 50 pounds to have hard anodized. So I've got to find a few more things to take to Camcoat in the meantime. And I found one, or rather, I found something that's not mine, but I'll take it along anyway and see if they can uh, sort out this particular issue. So what I've got is quite a rare Astrolite wheel from the 80s. Now these were originally gold, or sometimes black, but mainly gold. But as you can see, this has been given a rather horrible red anodized coating sometime in the past. And my mate wants to have it back to gold. And that's not so easy because, well, I'm not sure that uh, you can just over overcoat this thing with gold uh, anodizing. I suspect you'll have to strip away this old anodizing first, and that's not easy because I think you've got to use sulfuric acid to remove hard anodizing. So that's no good. But we do have an option, which is currently all the rage, and that is Cerakoting. And Cerakoting is a uh, very hard wearing, looks pretty good, and yeah, very thin as well, which is what we need. So I'm gonna go over there and see if we can get a good close match to the original gold color of the wheel. And to find that match, what I've got here is a piece that's been cut out of an original wheel some time ago, and that wheel was buckled and destroyed. So my mate Jeff, he salvaged this part for the main reason is to get the colour. So if I put this on here like that, I'll show you how it will work. It's pretty obvious, I guess. So as you can see, that's how it would work. So hopefully we can get a coating that closely matches this gold finish. I'm not sure if you can, but we can always try. Now Jeff, my mate, who owns this wheel, doesn't want it powder coated for some reason. And I'm not sure if Cerakote has a range of colours that we need. I know they do a gold colour, but whether it's close to this, I don't know. So I'll take this over to uh, Camcoat, to Nick at Camcoat, and hopefully we can find a solution which keeps everyone happy. So these now have to be boxed away. I'll stick them in the car. I'll go and see Camcoat, and hopefully in a few weeks' time, we'll get them back. And yeah, this old wheel here should be looking an awful lot better, but we'll see. And now it's a few weeks later, I've just collected some parts from Camcoat. So here we have the billet rear caliper mount, along with the billet engine mounts, which have all been done, as you can see, in hard anodized black. Now I've not yet got the gold rear astrolite because Camcoat weren't happy with the color match on their first attempt, and so it's being redone, and I'll get a call when that's ready. And so these parts are now ready to go back on the bike. And so here's the rear brake caliper on its mount on the rear swing arm, you can see. Now I've not yet got correct size fasteners I want to use, so these temporary ones will do for now. Yeah. And here's the billet engine mount on the frame, along with the stainless steel engine bolts. Now again, I don't yet have the correct fasteners, but I'll get them measured, get them ordered, and get them on the bike. <sighs> However, one problem I found is that this engine bolt is obviously too long, so that'll have to come off and be put on the lathe and shortened by about 20 millimeters. But it's great that it's too long rather than too short. And so with those billet parts now anodized and fitted, I can move on to the next job. And the next job, of course, will be finishing off the engine. I've not done much with it in the last month or so because it's been too damn cold. I mean, right now it's hovering around zero degrees in here and it's really too cold to work for any length of time. But hopefully things will warm up soon and I can get on and complete the engine build. One more thing I've got a problem with is the gearing of the bike. You see, I've got the Yamaha R6 wheels combined with obviously a GPZ 750 engine. 
and normally I convert the bike from a 630 chain to a more modern 530 chain and sprockets of course. The problem is I can't get the correct gearing I need with the 530 uh, sprockets and chain. So I've had to look elsewhere and I found the correct sprockets but they're 525, 525 size chain. So the bike's getting quite unusual for me, a 525 chain sprocket kit. I've got the sprockets now, just not got a chain yet, but that will come along at some point in the future. And so I think that's it for now. And so thanks for watching and cheers.